Today we're going to use the three steps to sketch method to get a graph of a pretty basic sine graph, y equals three sine of x over four. So jumping right in, we have our template written out, all three of our steps and the information we need to find. And we have a nice grid off to the right and a reminder of our equation. So before we get started, let's do a quick rewrite of our equation so that we can really clearly see what we know we're going to want to find A and B. Remember these, these equations are in the form Y equals A sine BX. Okay, and I think it's pretty clear that the B is one fourth, but let's just rewrite our equation so we're really clear. We can rewrite this as three sine of one fourth X. So we can see our B is one fourth. We know one fourth times X is the same thing as one X over four. All right, so let's jump in. We see that A is the coefficient out in front of the sine function. It's going to be three, and we can see it over in our rewritten one. That means our amplitude is three, and that's our distance from the midline of our function up to a maximum, or also from midline to minimum. Okay, we also notice there's no negative out front, so we know that this graph should not be reflected. It'll be like our parent graph of sine of x. We'll get into that a little bit more in just a minute. Okay, and then we know b is going to be 1 fourth, like we've talked about. So b tells us two pretty big important pieces of information. First, it tells us how many cycles of our graph should happen between zero and two pi. And so this is telling us a quarter of a graph will happen between zero and two pi, or excuse me, a quarter of a cycle. Okay, so that's something important to know, and we can take a look at that at the end and just confirm that that is true. Um, and on a related note, B also helps us find the period. So let's go ahead and do that. To find the period, we just take two pi and divide by B. So we have two pi, divided by 1 fourth. Okay, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, so multiplying by four. Okay, our period is eight pi. That's the length that we need to complete one cycle horizontally. Okay, and so you can see how it's related to B. If only a quarter of a cycle happens between zero and two pi, it makes sense that a full cycle would take eight pi. Okay, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and look at our scale labels. And these are chosen with the three steps to sketch method very intentionally. You could choose almost anything, um, but especially for the horizontal scale, we want it to be very particular so that all our key points align with our horizontal tick marks. It makes for a really nice, neat, and easy to read graph. Okay, so to pick what we count by to label our horizontal tick marks, you just need to take the period and divide by four because we'll have four key points. Okay, so for our horizontal scale, we should take our period eight pi and divide by four. So we'll be counting by two pi when we label our horizontal axis. Okay, for our vertical axis, you could count by threes, you could use A. I usually just like to count by one unless there's something crazy going on. Um, it just gives you, if, especially if you're graphing multiple graphs, it gives you an idea of the difference in that vertical stretch that's happening. Okay, the difference in the amplitudes that you see. All right, so let's go ahead and label and then we will be well on our way to graphing. So starting with our horizontal axis, we're counting by two pi. So we have two pi, four pi, six pi, eight pi, we'll stop there. Your fourth horizontal tick mark to the right of the origin should match your period when you use this method. That's another benefit. Um, so you can always kind of double check yourself our fourth tick mark is labeled eight pi. So we know we're on the right track. Okay, let's go ahead and label the negative side of the horizontal axis. It'll be all the same, but just with negatives. So negative six pi, negative eight pi. Okay, that'll give us enough space for another cycle. All right, and let's go ahead and label nice and easy our vertical axis. All right, we have all our setup and we are ready to move into step two where we will plot our key points. Okay, so the base pattern for sine, and remember we talked about we have an unreflected sine because we have a positive three as our A. Okay, so we know our base pattern will be 
zero, maximum, zero, minimum. Okay, and we start for this unshifted sine graph at the origin for our first zero. So it's our first key point. Okay, then we know we're going to have a maximum that falls in line with our first tick mark. So that'll be two pi. And the y coordinate is just whatever the value of a is. So we have a point at two pi comma three. Okay, our next point in the pattern is going to be another zero. That'll happen at our second tick mark to the right of the origin. And our final key point will happen at the third tick mark horizontally. And this time its y coordinate will be the opposite of a because it's our minimum. So it'll happen at six pi comma negative three. All right, and something I like to do right before we get into step three, it just makes it a little bit easier to sketch. I like to go ahead and set my next cycle's first point, so that zero at eight pi, uh, just to help draw a nice smooth curve and kind of have an end point that we're going for. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch and then we'll do one more cycle. So step three is to sketch and repeat. So we're gonna sketch in our characteristic sine curve. All right, we've got that. We can do an arrow to show that it keeps going. Um, one quick note before we repeat, remember we did talk about B tells us that a quarter of a cycle should happen between zero and two pi. Take a quick look at that. So from zero to two pi, we have a quarter of the cycle. Um, and that just should make you feel really confident that your graph is correct. Okay, so to sketch one more cycle, let's do that on the negative side of the horizontal axis. We just wanna make sure we have four tick marks so that we have enough space for another repetition of this pattern. Remember, sine is a periodic function, so it's just repetitive. Okay, so we can start our pattern over at negative eight pi with a zero. We'll have a maximum at negative six pi. So the y coordinate's three. We have another zero at negative four pi another minimum at negative two pi, and we would connect back in with the green cycle that we already graphed. So sketch that in. And now you have two cycles of y equals three sine of x over four. Keep practicing, you'll really get the hang of this method. Um, for more examples of sine, and for some other trick functions and how to use a three steps to sketch method, check out the links in the video description.